Hi and welcome in this video. Today we talk about size. Sensor size. What do the different sensor sizes mean? Micro for third, medium format, APS-C and full frame. You will learn it in this video. A lot of people ask me about sensor size. What do the different sizes mean? What size is best for photography, landscape photography, portrait photography and so on. There are a lot of rumors on the internet about sensor size, so I thought let's make a video and I have three different cameras here with three different sensors. I have one APS-C camera, you can see this here, it's the A6000 by Sony. I have a full frame camera, this is the A7R2, my mainly landscape photography camera. And because it's mirrorless you can actually see the sensor. If you never have seen a sensor, that's what it looks like. And then we have the beast, the Phase 1 XF medium format and I can show you the medium format sensor. It's a huge sensor and actually the whole back thing here is the sensor. But because showing sensors and understanding sensors are two different things, so I made some nice preparation. This is a medium format sensor size. This tiny thing here is a full frame sensor size. This tiny thing is an APS-C sensor size and this tiny little thing is a micro four third sensor size. And seeing all of them over each other makes you understand how different the size actually is. What does it mean now in photography? I show you a quick example. I will now take the same shot with three different sensor sizes. I will start with the A6500 APS-C camera and I will now just focus that little flower here in the foreground. I'm on 110 millimeter f4 and something around the 320s of a shutter. Let's take the image. Okay, that's the APS-C image. And as you can see, the background is very nice and very blurry. And that is because of the 110 millimeter. But the whole frame is very close, so we see the flower and a bit of a blurry background. Now let's take the same shot with a full frame camera. 110 millimeter full frame sensor. I take the exact same image. I'm sitting on the same place but now on full frame focus, the settings are the same, f4 and so on, and I take the image. All right, and as we can see now already, we have the same nice blurry background, we have the same flower, but we have more blurriness in the image. And with more, I don't mean that it's blurrier, but you have actually more of the size of the blurriness in the image because the sensor itself is bigger. And when I now take the same shot with my monster here, the Phase 1 XF medium format sensor camera, I'm on f4, I'm on a 320s of a shutter, 110 millimeter, just the same like with the other cameras. But when I now take the same shot from the exact same position, focus on the tiny flower here, you can see that you get much more of the image with the same distance of me to the subject, in this case, the flower. And that is actually the difference of the different sensor sizes. You don't get a more blurry image, but you can see more. And that's why most of the people think with a bigger sensor, you get a more blurry image. And actually you get a more blurry image, but you get more of the image and not more blurriness. Why is this now important? Yeah, let's think you take a portrait and not a flower shot and you want to have one or even two persons in the frame and you want a nice blurry background. When you now use an APS-C camera with, let's say, a long lens, you have to go very far away to get both of the people in the frame and because you are far away, the background will not be that blurry anymore. You can take a more wide-angle lens, then you have both of the people in the frame, but 
the background then is not that blurry anymore. And that's why the huger the sensor, the nicer the image and the yeah more special the look of the image usually is. That's one thing about sensor size. A second thing is image quality. Because imagine you have, let's say, 24 megapixel. That means 24 million pixel. Uh, imagine a pixel like a sand cone. You have 24 million sand cones and you want to place them on a full frame sensor. That will fit because there is plenty of space. But now take the same 24 million sand cones and try to place the same sand cones on this tiny sensor. What happens now? Everything is squeezed more together, everything gets tinier. Maybe the sand cones are not sand cones, but tiny sand cones now. And you have 24 megapixels, 24 million pixels, but you now squeeze them on that tiny little sensor. And that usually is a lack of image quality then. What is amazing about a bigger sensor is as well that you have a better noise performance. Because imagine maybe the 7S II or 7S by Sony. You have only 12 megapixel on that huge sensor size. And that's why you can put the ISO up a lot because the pixel itself have plenty of space and are more sensitive to the light and then get a better noise performance and you can put the ISO up on this camera till 400,000 but usable maybe till 80 and that's great in low light. And now you might think, okay, then a medium format camera will be nice in low light as well. And that is actually not the case because you have 100 million pixel on this sensor. It's a huge sensor, but it has to store 100 million pixel. And that's why this camera, for example, has a native ISO of 35, which is very low and not that sensitive, but can go up till, yeah, on a usable quality, maybe 1,600, 3,200, something like this. Everything over that ISO value is yeah just grainy and not usable anymore. But if that huge sensor would only have like 12 megapixel or even 24 megapixel, then it would be amazing. But of course, the bigger the sensor, the more expensive it is. Because when you imagine you have one piece of great sensor and get this size out of it, or you can cut from the same sensor, one, two, three, four, five, six sensors, then of course it's cheaper to make a lot of small sensors, put them in cameras and just sell them for a cheaper price. Does a bigger sensor now mean that you get a better image? No, you don't get a better image, but you get a better image quality, sometimes better noise performance, and of course, a great bokehlicious look. And that's what sensor size is actually about. What is your favorite sensor or your favorite look of a sensor? Write it in the comments below, full frame, maybe medium format, micro four thirds or APS-C in the comments below and quick commercial. If you want to learn more about landscape photography, photography in general or image editing, check out learnfromben.com. This is my website and there you can download courses on your computer. Learn from ben.com. I see you in the next video. Hit thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I take some more photos.